Morning, everyone. It's Andrew from the Market Mindset. Today, we're catching up with Drew Zimmerman here at the Fall Showcase, the Red Cloud Fall Showcase. Uh, we're going to talk about uranium. Uh, so, Stall Stallion Resources, Drew Zimmerman, CEO of Stallion. We've got a couple things we want to talk on. Tell us a little bit about Stallion first before we jump into the news that you just put out. Yeah, Stallion Uranium has the largest land package in the Southwest Athabasca Basin, what we call the new frontier of exploration in the basin. It's got two absolute world class deposits with Fission Uranium and Next Gen Energy. We have a land package all around them with multiple nine tier one targets that we think could host a world-class deposit, one of which we've advanced to drill testing and have a follow-up drill program with near-term discovery potential. So exciting times. Exciting. And there was great results in the, in the summer as well, that, which was nice to see. Absolutely. So then people were asking, okay, well, what's, what's the follow-up here? And this kind of leads into part two, because you had a project as well that you just put out news uh, that was an antimony project. Tell us about that. What's happened there? Yeah, antimony's become incredibly topical. Uh, no domestic production in the United States. And China just said, we're no longer going to export this critical mineral anymore. So our project in central Idaho, gold and antimony right next to Perpetua Resources, is going to be the only source of antimony in the United States. We've optioned that off so that we can focus on uranium. But by optioning that off, we've got a 20% carried interest. We're getting $2.2 million in cash and shares, and we're getting a $5 million work commitment over four years. So somebody else is really going to bring that project forward for us, give us a lot of upside. It's a free call option on the gold and antimony market for us. We think there's a tremendous amount of value that can come from that project. But again, it allows us to be focusing on all the work that we're doing in the Athabasca Basin. It's great recognition and great support uh, to, to flow in this kind of cash to focus on the program that people were asking, hey, let's follow up on this. Uh, and just so people know, antimony, that's that you need that for chips. I mean, that, that's no small discussion to be had anywhere. The chip conversation, whether it's from AI or just chips in general uh, in the States, that's a, a critical, critical component uh, uh, in development. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, you need these critical minerals and we're seeing that more and more throughout the supply chain. So again, being able to have something domestic in the United States is going to be huge. And we think that's where uh, a lot of that value from the project is going to come from. So what's OK. The, everything gets closed out when you'll announce that. What's it look like then as far as the program moving forward? Uh, you've got targets picked out already or what's what's the plan yeah we do i mean we've been you know hard at work over the last couple of years we had a big land package but we put out our exploration funnel so how do we effectively and efficiently take such a big land package and find the very best targets that we think just increase your probability yep. of making that big discovery so we've got nine key targets that like i said we think are top tier best uh, that we could find and we've already advanced one of them to a drill program great results. We hit the big graphitic conductor. Again, these are the, the plumbing systems of the Athabasca Basin that give you your uranium deposits. So now we know exactly where we want to drill to follow up to have that discovery hole on our Appaloosa target. Well, at the same time, we're advancing some of the other targets towards drill readiness as well. So we can have a pipeline of new targets coming online ready to be drill tested as we advance Appaloosa as well. So a lot going on with us, but again, that's just a lot of upside potential in a uranium market that we think is really starting to see the urgency of getting these new deposits found, because that's what we're out there trying to do. Absolutely. I mean, the, they call it the second uh, nuclear renaissance. It seemed to slow down over the summer a bit, but it looks like it's picking up again here. And it's just the, the sheer realization that whether it's Microsoft and Constellation, whether it's Google announcing that they're going to have their own project, uh, nuclear is, as far as tech is concerned, is going to be their base load. So yeah. if, if the rest of the world kind of takes some pause and go, wait, these tech billionaires and geniuses are all deciding that nuclear is their solution. Should we think about that? Yeah, should we be paying attention? <laughs> should we be, should yeah, we be paying attention? Exactly. And I think it's funny that you say it slowed down over the summer because, yes, uranium spot price spot, slowed down yeah. in the summer. But all the fundamental news coming behind the uranium market did not skip a beat all no. through the summer. We got positive news, positive news. Yep. Reactor restarts, reactor life extensions, yes. new governments turning reactors back on, huge build-outs in China, more build-outs coming in the U.S. And then, of course, the, the sort of cherry on top that isn't even in the supply and demand models is all this new tech sort of SMR build-out. Uh, Google, obviously, the most recent one saying yep. they're going to build their own SMRs. 
But I think when you had Microsoft come out and say, we are going to restart Three Mile Island, I mean, that yes. would normally be the hot potato nobody would want to touch. <laughs> yes. And to have Microsoft come out and say, we don't care, we want the power, we need yes. the power, and get applauded for doing so, I think just shows you how much the public sentiment has changed yes. around nuclear power. And that's, I mean, absolutely amazing to see. And we think it just continues to build. But again, that's in a supply demand market that is already you know, hugely undersupplied. So we really need to get out there and say, if we want to supply this market and allow this nuclear renaissance to continue, we need to find the new deposits now because they're going to be a decade or eight years before they even think about coming online. So I, again, the work that the junior explorer codes are doing now will feed into the pipeline of what happens with the nuclear renaissance a decade from now. And that's and that's why it's so important. It goes without saying, just as a reminder, everyone knows Athabasca Basin, that's the place and certainly in North America, the only arguable place that's better in comparison is uh, Kazakhstan. And I think just news out yesterday was that they have committed like half of their sales to China. Is yeah. that a problem? Like that's just boom. You go, oh, okay. So that line also seems to be drawn in the sign too that, okay, well, where's the West going to get all of theirs from? It, like if it, they're going that direction, we better be catching up and have projects ready to go. They, exactly. I mean, if you're looking at Kazataprom producing about 45% of the world's uranium and they start to take that away from the Western market, then the Western market has to go, OK, well, now now where are we going to go? And, and that is where I think Canada and specifically the Athabasca Basin really needs to shine. And I mean, when you're looking at Cameco with the two big producing mines right now, I mean, they are bearing the brunt of that. Yeah. But we need more coming online. We obviously will have, you know, two mines in the in the southwest, uh, both fission uranium and their deal with Paladin. Yep. And then next gen energy bring those into development. But again, those are just the start and they sort of scratch the surface. When we see what is happening on the scale that it's happening for for nuclear and I think again it continues to build at a very big level, we need even more. I mean it, it really doesn't start to move the needle at this point. And I think that's what is so exciting about this is that it's such a prolonged sort of view for the next several decades. And as we move forward, it's going to be baseload, clean energy that just allows everybody to live a better life, to be honest, I yes. mean, to really sum it up, yeah. uh, which is just such an exciting industry to be a part of and, and why we like it. And I don't think we've got a political issue. I mean, we know that the hardest part was getting Democrats on side. They're 100 percent on board. So whether elect, election wise, who cares? Like we both know that both sides are going to be OK with nuclear. Yeah, uh, that pathway moving forward is great. I think the U.S. is, is like they're going to want three times the amount of capacity by 2050. That's a lot of resources, a lot of infrastructure, a lot of build out, a lot of uranium. Exactly. Uh, and Canada has that f potential to be the uh, fielding supplier, uh, down, you know, moving forward. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, Canada has had a great nuclear industry vertically integrated right from the ground to the can-do reactors that we don't need, yep. you know, that highly uh, enriched uranium to run. So, you know, we not only have the resource, but we have a lot of know-how and expertise to be able to help other countries and, and make a whole business out of it. Uh, so I think it's a tremendous opportunity, not only for, you know, the Athabasca Basin in Saskatchewan, but Canada uh, to really step up on the global stage and say, we are a nuclear player, we are nuclear experts and, and be a leader in that field. And Stallion is very interesting because you get to have that marriage between the tech, because you've got you've got the the chip kind of story embedded in your story now as well with the antimony, as well as the nuclear power. So that's a really interesting take to have uh, uh, your company be able to have kind of both feet in both those spaces. It, it's a unique offering. Uh, you know, it's sort of like I say that that call option. What happens with gold and antimony? Yep. And a lot of good people with our team doing very good work on very good land in the Athabasca Basin. So. It's an exciting Excellent. place to be. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Drew. We look forward to seeing all the news coming forward. Yeah, thanks, Andrew.